Bueno, ahora vamos a hacer un panel muy interesante. Muchos de vosotros tenéis teléfonos inteligentes y no todos. Y muchos de vosotros empezáis a tener asistentes virtuales dentro de los teléfonos. El Siri famoso. Eh, pues aquí tenemos a uno de los desarrolladores, eh, al líder del desarrollo de ese asistente personal que tenéis en el teléfono. Y vamos a ver hacia dónde evoluciona en el futuro. Y para moderar este panel, hemos invitado a Ken Morse, a nuestro viejo amigo, que es el fundador del Centro de Emprendimiento de MIT, un emprendedor archiconocido por casi todos vosotros, y que va a estar eh, liderando la conversación con Bill Mark, que viene del Stanford Research International. Thank you, uh, Pedro. It's really great to be here in Valencia. I've been to a lot of MTEX. I don't see why we should ever have them anywhere else but here, Pedro. What do you think? It's a, a perfect uh, location. And, and I, don't, I don't know how you choose them, Pedro. But we learned last night that even though Valencia is not the largest state or region in Spain, it has, in absolute terms, let alone relative terms, the highest number of entrepreneurs and innovators. And, and why not? Come to some great schools and stay here to build your company. But I want to talk about the evolution of personal assistance. Personal assistance. Now, The basic idea here, and what Bill is going to talk about, is that we think we should make technology our slave and not be slaves to technology. How does that sound? Manuel? Okay. So we want systems and devices that know us and that do things the way we want them to do. How many of you are old enough to remember making a long drive in a car and having to listen to the car radio give you the music that they thought you wanted? Do you still remember that? It was ugly. But now Pandora knows who we are, what we like, and we get what we want. Nest, thermostat. Used to just be static. You had to turn it on. Now the Nest knows when you're going away for the weekend and turns off the air conditioning and, and heating. Why things? An MIT spin off company in Paris, they've got the best of both, have, has a scale that will tweet your weight and tell you how you're doing on your weight loss program. Um, if you tune it wrong, all your friends who follow you on Twitter are going to know how you're doing as well, but you need to be careful. And they have a device that will tell you whether you really slept well last night or, or not. And I guess we could say even Burger King has a motto, we'll do it your way, okay? So that's what virtual per personal assistants are about, and there's nobody better to talk about it uh, than Bill. He was born in Minnesota and escaped to MIT and got his bachelor's and then his master's and then his PhD in electrical engineering and computer science. Uh, went to work for IBM, did a startup, of course, uh, national semiconductor, and for the last 15 years he has uh, been playing a series of important roles at SRI. Bill? Uh, thank you, Ken. I'm here to uh, tell you a little bit about virtual personal assistants and where they're going in the future. So first of all, um, virtual personal assistants are all around us. We're very familiar with them. I mean here software that understands your intent and does something for you. They're being developed all over the world. Uh, here in Spain, uh, your company Indesys was recently bought by Intel, for example. But there are many of these throughout the world. You've all seen them, I think, on the internet or on your phone. So I'm going to talk about how virtual personal assistants are going to evolve from where they are now. First, they're going to get a lot better at conversation. Second, 
they're going to get better at anticipation, knowing what you want before you even have to ask for it. And third, they're going to enter the real world. They're going to be with us, not just on the computer, but in the environment around us. So let me start with conversation. I hope you're all familiar with Siri. Uh, Siri was a spin-off from my group in SRI. Um, Siri actually spun off in the year 2007. Uh, it was developed about a little bit more than a year later as an app for the iPhone. But it became really famous because Apple acquired Siri and there on the right is actually an advertisement from the launch of the iPhone 4S in October of 2011. So I bring this up to tell you that we're very proud of Siri, but for us, Siri was a long time ago. So just to, in case anybody is not familiar with Siri, here's how Siri works. So if you say to Siri, uh, at least in the United States, I am looking for a handbag, Siri will say something like, I found four women's clothing stores near you. And I think that's actually a very good, helpful response from Siri. And Siri is able to do that because it knows that there is an association between handbag and women's clothing. So as I say, that's very useful, but um, I don't find it very satisfactory because I want the system to do more for me. So here's an example of where we're going with this. So I have to tell you, this system, as you'll see from the dates, is about good two years old. Ms. Taylor, it's good to see you again. How may I help you? I'm looking for a handbag. Do you want something like the Marrakesh handbag you bought in January 2010? I'm looking for a bag that I saw in a fashion magazine last month. Here is the bag that was featured in February 2011 issue of Vogue magazine. Is this what you are looking for? How does it compare with the one that I bought last year? It is slimmer than the one you bought in March 2010. It has separate pockets for a cell phone and a PDA. It seems very small. I want a larger one. Here are the larger bags. I like Jackie. What colors do you have? It is available in the following colors, black and beige ebony with dark brown. Oh, let me go for black. Okay, as I said, um, you can tell from Here the Here is the larger black Jackie bag. Is this, this what you are looking for? Yes. This system is about two years old. Um, it's a little bit more than two years old. Our new systems are actually much better than this. The voice is better, they're faster. But I think you get the idea. Here, the customer is having a conversation with the virtual personal assistant. The virtual personal assistant knows something about the customer and actually helps them make this purchase. So how does that all work? Just a little look under the hood. The whole idea of a virtual personal assistant is to recognize the intent, okay? That certainly means understanding the speech, but it also means understanding what the customer really wants, not just the words that they're saying. Now, once that's understood, then depending on whether the intent is fully specified or not, the virtual personal assistant will come back with a helpful response or it will ask for more information, more clarification. And you heard some of that in the dialogue that you just saw. So the first theme here is that we're moving forward in this conversational way, but I want to emphasize that this is not just about speech, it's about the back end as well. So here's another example. This is one of our spin-offs from SRI um, and called Desti. And it's a virtual personal assistant for travel. 
okay? And the reason I'm bringing this up is you can type things in like this. Here it's a place to stay in San Diego. But what's really important about Desti is after it understands you, it sifts through all kinds of travel information on the web. And as you all know, there's a lot of it. And it finds just the right thing for you, just the kind of thing Ken was talking about. So it has to be smart enough to understand what you're asking on the front end, but smart enough on the back end to give you what you want once it's understood. OK, second theme, anticipation. When I say that, I sure everyone in the audience thinks of Google Now, and that's exactly what you should think of, because Google Now is uh, anticipating your needs, okay? It's trying to bring things up for you, and before you ever need to ask, it's supposed to bring some information right to your fingertips. Now, I think that's a fabulous idea. Um, we want to take that even further. So here is another SRI spin-off called Tempo, which was actually started before Google Now. And the idea of Tempo is to have an intelligent calendar. So if you have a meeting scheduled on your calendar, it will, if you give it permission, automatically look through your email and the documents that you give it access to and find everything that's relevant to that meeting, and it will bring that to you to prepare you for the meeting. It also finds out where your meeting is and gives you an amount of time. How much time is it going to take to get there, given current conditions? And if you're running late, I know none of you do, but just in case, it has a one-button click to tell everybody in the meeting that you're running late. So that's one stage, I think, past Google Now, but we want to go even further than that. So just here's a question for you. When we interact with computers, what's the slowest part? And the answer is, it's where we're trying to show or tell the computer what we want to do. Because the computer is very fast, and our brains are very fast, even faster than the computer. The slow part is to go from the brain to touching or saying, etc. So we want a system that can anticipate what we want to do on the computer at any given time. And that system, which is now, I've been talking about things that are kind of out in the marketplace. I wanted to bring up one thing that's still in the world of research. This is something we're working on in our laboratories right now. It's called Bright. And the whole idea is to anticipate user intentions. Well, what's so hard about that? Well, what's hard about that is what the user does, what all of us do when we use computers, is we touch, or we type, or we speak, or we gaze. That's, that's what we do, OK? What does the computer see? The computer sees some applications, and it sees a sequence of actions that the user has selected. That's what the computer sees. But what's in our head? Our head is some high-level task, like maybe update the budget, or do something relevant to our work or our daily life. So the problem that Bright has is to use machine learning to take a look at what the user does and what the system sees and infer things at the level of user intent. And then once it does that, it does something that we call intention autocomplete. So it sees here the user is doing task one, and sorry, part one, and part one is part of many tasks, so it doesn't know how to help you yet. Ah, but when you do two, when you go to step two, it says, well, I know that there's a task that starts that way, so I'm going to suggest to the user the whole rest of that. I'm going to go from A to Z without having to go through all the letters in between. That's what Bright does. It anticipates what we need. So, let me move on. Last topic, virtual personal assistants entering the real world. And again, what you should immediately think of, our friends at Google right down the road from us, Google Glass. Okay? So Google Glass is this really neat thing. Um, you can talk to it a little bit, but mostly it will bring up information that's relevant as you look at things in the world. We want to take that a step further. Here's an example that we're working on to 
help people in actually many areas, but in this case, we're going to show you an example of, of how a virtual personal assistant can be combined with augmented reality to help people fix things. So um, that thing there on the right is a, is a leaf blower, and the person who's trying to fix it is, is wearing that kind of gear you see on the left. And I will apologize in advance because the video is a little bit shaky, and that's because the video is being taken by that camera unit on the person's head. So let's see what it's like. Yeah, mentor, my Hexvarna leaf blower is running a little rough. What should I do? It sounds like we should do general maintenance. First, let's check the air filter. For easy access, face the blower on the side with the air filter assembly. Now, unscrew the filter cover thumb screws highlighted and then remove the cover. I see that you have done that. Remove the filter and inspect it. If it looks clogged, old, or damaged, replace it with a new filter. The filter looks good. What's next? Okay, next we should inspect the spark plug. For easy access, face the blower on the side with the spark plug. Remove the spark plug cover highlighted. Once the cover is off, unscrew and remove the spark plug for inspection. What should I look for? Inspect the plug for any damage, foul up or wear and tear. Does it look like any of these pictures? The last one in row two. It looks like the spark plug has some carbon deposit. You need to clean the electrodes with a wire brush. Okay, you get the idea. So where this team is going in the future is um, getting more and more uh, vision understanding so that they even smoother and more helpful. Uh, personally, I've asked them to do one for putting together IKEA furniture. I think it would be a really big seller. Okay, so those are the themes that I wanted to talk to you about. Um, we see that virtual personal assistants are going from where they are now, which is pretty useful, to being better at conversation, better at anticipation, and going more into the real world. And the destiny, I think, is that the virtual personal assistants will be learning for you, from you, and the world, doing things for you, simplifying the world for you, that's really important, and finally, discovering new things for you. Thank you. We, we deliberately planned this so there would be time for questions. There are microphones uh, reasonably conveniently located. You can speak in any language uh, that you like, <laughs> as long as it's Spanish or English. Uh, and we, we look forward to, uh, to hearing from you. And if we don't get a question really fast, I'm going to cold call the local government uh, <laughs> to see if, if... Max, would you like to do the first question or <laughs> any, anything that uh, in, anybody would like to ask Bill or, uh, or, or me. There's some people over there a little bit shy. <laughs> Spanish or English? Uh, English, it's fine. Okay, great. Well, thanks, thanks a lot for your presentation. I was very interested on what you explain of how uh, these virtual assistants can make you suggestions of what you're supposed to do next, how to update the budget, etc. How do you think that's going to impact labor markets uh, in the world? Because there is people saying that these new technologies are uh, depressing wages of the middle class as uh, uh, blue, uh, white collar type of jobs are being increasingly done by computers. Like this seems that it's going to remove even farther of those of those jobs. Thanks. I th I think that's a really um, important question. Um, it, the topic is debated around the world. Uh, all I can do is give you my personal opinion about it. Um, I actually think that this will be job enhancing. I think that the kinds of things that virtual personal assistants will be doing for us will create many more opportunities than they destroy 
in the labor market. Um, we see now, we've, we've seen this many times, that, that when new technology comes in, sometimes it's disruptive in the beginning, but in the end, it creates a whole new ecosystem of businesses that allow people at all levels to thrive. That's my view of how it will work. By the way, I did not say that the system would update the budget for you. <laughs> no one knows how to do that. Good. Thank you very much. Thank you. Who's next, please? It's It's hard for us to, to see. There's a hand up there. Pere? It looks like Pere. Yeah? No. Oh, the, okay, so you have to get to a mic or you can shout and I'll repeat it. Right, so yeah. when, when can we have it? We, uh, we want it now. The question was, just in case you couldn't hear it, the question was, um, when would uh, the uh, augmented reality uh, stuff be available? It's available in the state that you saw it right now, um, but I don't think you'd want it in the state that you saw it. Uh, so I would say we're a year or so away. Um, again, questions like that are very hard to answer because as various speakers earlier in the day have said, um, that's market-driven. The technology already is capable to some extent. The question is exactly how should it be shaped to meet people's real needs? That's, that's the question. Final point on specific to the augmented reality question. Um, those, those little units that you saw and, and the, the microphone are still a little bit expensive. The system works right now um, on like a tablet, okay? It's not quite as good, but it's, it's close. So it's also the, f the form factor that you want to use that, that will determine that. Great. Sir? So, Bill, uh, one of the things that uh, people are, have, have been asking is are there particular applications that you've seen from, from your vantage point near Hoover Tower um, that are likely to come in uh, more rapidly because of the very high value that they can uh, deliver? Yes. So, um, so first of all, we, we see a lot of applications under development. Um, most of them I can't talk to you about. That's why I showed you a video that was two years old. But if you want a, a prediction based on what I see, uh, two areas. Um, one that I've already uh, indicated with the video I showed you has to do with shopping, with retail interaction. And the important part about that is I showed an example that was online shopping, and there's a lot of interest in that, but there's also a lot of interest in combining real-world shopping, bricks and mortar, as we say, with the online experience. So I think quite soon we're going to be seeing virtual personal assistants that cross that boundary. That's why I wanted to talk about virtual personal assistants entering the real world. The second area that I also showed a couple examples of is the world of services, banking, travel, things like that, where what people want to do is actually pretty complicated. It, it's hard to plan a trip. It's hard to do banking interactions. So you really want an assistant to help you because that, that whole world is becoming computerized. So areas like that. I just want to say that BBVA, which is a, a sponsor, uh, is probably at the, at the forefront of both research and applications of virtual personal assistants to make the, the, the retail banking experience uh, much more uh, favorable. Uh, the other thing is, if you think about the way uh, people work, uh, when they need help uh, and they have time to get help, it's usually uh, when they're home from work and after dinner and they put the kids to bed. 
and having a, a virtual per personal assistance available at midnight to uh, thoughtfully and correctly <laughs> respond to your questions is a very good thing. And the companies that are uh, investing heavily uh, in virtual personal assistants have taken note of, of one thing that is probably obvious but worth mentioning. Uh, virtual personal assistants are, are non-union. Uh, they'll work uh, all night and they never get tired and they're always uh, cheerful. They're never, never grumpy. And anyone, uh, I believe one of the battlegrounds but for competition between major uh, corporations with bricks and mortar and without is in the area of customer service. And any of you Spanish speaking, English speaking, who have been rooted to a, a call center in Bangalore and, and hung up in, in uh, frustration would be happy to have a virtual personal assistant that speaks your language is and is never wrong and is there uh, when you need them in the in the middle of the night and cheerful any other uh, question or comment yes sir Can I, I can repeat the question. If you can share uh, after two years of Siri in the, in the mainstream market with iPhone users, I'm an Android user, so, uh, but what I, what I can tell you is that Google now, uh, everything that uh, suggests me, 80% uh, of the things are w wasteless. Uh, it's try, always trying to tell me how to travel from here to places that I, ha I have searched. For instance, right now, it's telling me how to go to Esade in Barcelona. I don't know why. <laughs> but uh, uh, I'm asking. You should try. About, it's not so bad over there. Yeah, no, but no bad place. <laughs> but the question, is, the question is about can you share with us any, any data uh, about city real usage and the, the accuracy and the utility for the persons? So I'm, I'm very happy to say that um, when a company acquires our technology, I'm no longer responsible for... <laughs> so so the, the, the very short answer is no, um, because I don't have any special insight into um, what Apple is doing with Siri. So I've seen various articles around the web that try to address that question. But you actually, you asked a very interesting question. Because you didn't say, what most people ask is, what percentage of the time does Siri understand the person? Does it get the speech right? Okay, and that's a good question, and there's statistics on that. But what you said was, what percentage of the time does Siri do something useful for me? Okay, that's a much harder question to answer because it depends on what that particular person finds useful. So I don't know how many of you use Siri, but Siri with the Apple implementation, one of the things I notice that they're really trying for is it's fun. People use Siri for fun. And that's very realistic because people have conversations with each other for fun. Okay? So I can't tell you whether that's useful or not, but people seem to like it, and they buy iPhones, which is what Apple really cares about. So you saw in the examples that I was giving, the, the virtual personal assistants that we develop are all meant to perform tasks. We're not, we're not in the world of fun, okay? Um, we're in the world of helping people perform tasks. And I'll, I'll just add one more observation to what Ken said about having a virtual personal assistant in the middle of the night. That's very important. But what I notice is I'm, I use online systems all the time. And I think I'm very good at it. I think I'm very good at online banking and online travel and things like that. But I sometimes get into a situation where I don't know how to answer a question or the options given are not one that I want to take, okay? And then I'm completely stuck. 
I'm sure everyone here has had this experience. You're doing fine, you're using the online system, then you get stuck, and the system usually gives you a telephone number to call, or it says, send a message to this person, and it takes hours to, to get the answer. One of the great uses of virtual personal assistance is in that case. So go ahead, use the online system. If you're good at it, you'll be very effective. But when it breaks down, it's great to have a virtual personal assistant to help you. So I think we're going to uh, set aside now this conversation because it's lunchtime. You don't need to use your virtual personal assistant to find out how to get to lunch because we have many personal assistants. They're all in <laughs> M-Tech shirts. Follow them and uh, you'll get uh, build on the intellectual nourishment you've had this morning uh, and we'll be ready for the afternoon after a lovely lunch. Uh, Ken, sorry to interrupt you, but we, we're not going out for lunch yet. <laughs> All right. We just need you for 10 more minutes. <laughs> okay. okay. Thank you, guys.